I'm a huge fan of cheap armour infraction inspired RC cars. I have featured the Pinecone models SG1603 on my channel many times now and that is one of my favourite cheap RC cars of all time uh, alongside the tiny 128th scale WL Toys 284131. Here we have the Comet Racer, this is a one tenth scale on-road RC truck and I think you can clearly see that it is inspired again by the armour infraction and this will likely appeal to fans who are looking for something a little bit bigger and more capable than the smaller SG1603 and a 284131. People have already noticed that this is selling for quite a lot of money at the moment. They're actually asking for about £130 which is about $175 and that is a lot of money. Now that may not seem like a huge amount of money when you compare it to the real armour infraction but we have to remember the budget RC market is a competitive one and to make this worth the price tag I'm expecting great things from it. Just like I always do on my channel we'll take a look at what we get in the box we'll then have a look at the truck itself followed by a quick run. But before we do that, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Also turn notifications on so that you're notified whenever I post a new video. Now, I've got loads of great stuff coming up in 2022. You're not going to want to miss that. I'd love to get to 20,000 subscribers, so let's try and make it happen. Banggood have been kind enough to send me the two battery version of this truck. So I have got two 1800 milliamp hour 2S lithium ion batteries in the box. Uh, we've got a basic USB charger pretty much the standard sort of USB charger that you see with these cheap RC cars. We've got a black and white manual which again is basic but it does have some exploded diagrams. Uh, this thing's good enough to get you up and running and if you're looking for spare parts there is a parts list at the back of the manual. Finally the transmitter. Uh, I've never had an issue with these. These are basically just like the, uh, the WL Toys transmitters that you get with uh, their range of RC cars. These things aren't too bad. I've never had any range issues uh, and it's pretty much exactly the same, feels the same, looks the same, nice foam grip on the wheel. The only thing we haven't got is the carry handle at the top and I have actually got the WL Toys version here and as you can see these things are pretty much identical. As you would expect you do get your steering trim, uh, you also have the ability to turn the throttle down if you're just starting out or you're new to the hobby and the truck's a little bit fast for you, you can actually adjust your throttle, that's a nice feature but overall not a bad little transmitter. All you need to provide is four AA batteries and you will be good to go. Right, so moving on, let's talk about the truck itself. Now Banggood have sent me the yellow version, but you can also get this in red. Uh, styling wise, I'm not too sure. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's certainly not great. Uh, personally, I think it's acceptable, but I can't say I'm the biggest fan. There's not really anything else we can talk about on the outside of this truck. So let's get the body off and take a closer look underneath. Electronics wise, this thing has got a 540 sized brush motor, a 50 amp brushed ESC and a 5 wire 3.5 kilogram servo. We've got metal CVDs on the front, metal dog bones on the rear, a metal centre drive shaft and this has also got metal diffs. We have got ball bearings, a plastic chassis with hex screws, a foam bumper on the front and the rear. We also get an empty receiver box there and I have taken those screws out and I can confirm that is empty and that's going to be ideal if we do decide to go brushless on this later on, we will have somewhere to put our receiver. There's also a cutout for an on and off switch which obviously isn't in use as the on and off switch is on the ESC but this makes me think there may be future versions of this model. So it sounds okay so far but things aren't looking too great when it comes to the suspension. We have friction shocks on the front and the rear and they feel terrible. Before even taking this for a run I have a feeling it's going to be very bouncy when we get it out later on. Not great for an RC car in this price range, I would expect to see oil filled proper shocks on this truck. I've said it before and I'm quite happy to say it again, when will cheap RC companies realise no one wants friction shocks? The wheels look nice and the tyres are a very firm compound. On the SG1603 and the 284131 by WL Toys, we get an extensive LED lighting system, but on this we don't get any LED lights. Now some people like LEDs on these cheap RC cars and some don't, 
Personally, I am a fan, and it's a shame we don't get anything on this truck. They say that this thing is a one-temp scale on-road RC truck. Now, unfortunately, I don't own a huge amount of one-temp scale on road cars. I'm primarily into my buggies and my trucks, as you've probably noticed. But I did build the HNR drift car last year, and that is a one-temp scale chassis. Now, comparing the two, obviously, we've got the bodies on. Comparing the two, I do think that the Comet Racer is a little bit smaller but that is just my opinion. This is an ongoing issue at the moment. We're seeing all the scale issues alongside the, uh, the full speed claims. They state this will do 48 kilometers per hour. I'm not sure that it will, but we'll find out later when we take it out. There's only one thing left to do. Let's get the batteries charged up. Let's head out and find out just how good this Comet Racer actually is. So I'll see you in a moment. So let's do the speed run first. Now they say this will do 48 kilometers per hour out the box, which is close to 30 miles per hour. Is it gonna do it? Let's find out. Right, let's do this. Now those friction shocks feel really bouncy already. Well, I've tested out a lot of different RC cars in the last couple of years here on the channel. And I can safely say this doesn't feel like 30 miles per hour. To be honest, it doesn't even feel like 20. But um, we won't guess, we'll see what the GPS says. Now the tires, because they are quite a firm compound, it doesn't feel too grippy and it is nice and dry today. Yeah, I don't think this is going to hit 30 miles per hour. It's also not the most stable thing. Right, we'll do another pass. And then we'll, uh, we'll see what we got. All right, let's bring it back and see what we got. We got 21. 21's not too bad. It's actually quicker than I thought it was gonna be. I thought we were gonna see 17 or 18. So that has surprised me a little bit. The last time I tested a car out on my channel using a lithium ion battery, someone did leave a comment saying, would it be any quicker if you used a LiPo? Well, let's find out. Right, so let's see if using a LiPo battery gives us a faster speed. It doesn't feel any faster, but is it gonna make a difference? It's different battery chemistry. I can't see it making a huge difference to be fair, but someone did request it last time. Do a couple more passes. Those shocks are terrible. It's a little bit unstable. Right, let's see what we got. No, nope, we got 21. As you see there, we still managed to achieve 21. So using a LiPo instead of the lithium ion didn't make any difference. So we know this can't do 30 miles per hour, but is it fun? Let's find out. I want to see if this truck has got any drift potential. Now I've come over to one of my favorite drift locations. You've seen this place loads of times before. I've done all my drift videos over here. I want to see how this truck performs on this surface. The tires on this truck are a very firm compound. So it's quite easy to get this thing sideways. <laughs> it's actually a lot of fun. It'll be interesting to see how this performs with a proper set of drift tires on it. Power-wise, I think it's probably enough for most people. But if you're used to faster trucks, you may get bored pretty quick. The shocks don't feel too bad over on this surface. They did feel a little bit bouncy, 
when we did the on-road speed run. I actually think with a decent set of oil field shocks, maybe even a mild brushless system, you could have a lot of fun with this little truck. There we go then, that was the one tenth scale Comet Racer, another armour infraction inspired RC truck, and I don't think it performed too badly. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the styling and the shocks are a little bit bouncy. With a brushless upgrade, a set of oil filled shocks, and maybe even some proper drift tyres, I feel like this truck could have a lot of potential. There is one thing that I cannot get out of my mind, and that is the price. I really feel like this should be priced a little bit cheaper than it is. £130 for this, I think, is a little bit too expensive. If they priced it a little bit lower, I think they would probably tempt more people. We're going to leave the video there today, guys, but just before you go, I want to let you know what my plan is with this truck. Now, I intend to do a full brush disc conversion. I also want to fit a set of drift tyres and I want to get a gyro in there and I want to see how it performs once we've changed it to brushless. So make sure you've subscribed to the channel and make sure you've got notifications turned on as well because that video is going to be coming out very, very soon. Cheers, guys. I'll see you again soon on the next one. Take care.